Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Whisper of Winter Chapter 2, Requiem of the Chained King. I swear to God, at some point in the plot, we will realize what that means. Um, but, uh, so, as today is episode 21, uh, as always, we begin with a recap of episode 20. So, uh, in the previous episode, uh, the party, having returned um, from taking back uh, uh, Adelaide's home city, Rexentrum, um, they returned back to Rosanna to decide on how best to proceed in this, um, in this large-scale battle uh, against which uh, they fought Godric and Karsis and Delilah, the remaining three lieutenants. Um, they knew that Delilah was in the south and Godric in the north, whereas Karsis is in the east, specifically in the city of Grimgalir, looking to... Um, recall how to cast a spell, Karsis Avatar, and um, basically become a god yet again. Um, and so, uh, the party uh, began planning with the Bright Queen and her council, as well as some of the uh, hellish knights that came um, from the Nine Hells, uh, as well as uh, Hilaire II, um, Zelron's sister. I'm, like, blinking on names today. Uh, as you guys, <laughs> as you guys uh, planned on how to continue in this war of the solstice, um, you decided that yeah, you would send out a strike force to deal with the Lila Briarwood and uh, take back the southern region of Wildmount, whereas uh, the majority of the army would be sent uh, to track down Karsis and prevent him from accessing um, any magical information to. Uh, be able to cast the spell again. Um, while uh, that happened, Godric waited in the shadows um, for uh, the oncoming fray. Um, and yeah, uh, Zelran also reconciled with Sammy there at the monastery, um, revealing the truth about um, Astrid and Rexendrum. Um, Sammy even though uh, they were not um, an item. Um, Sammy felt hurt, um, and Zelron empathetically understood and gave her some space, um, proclaiming that she was no longer under his tutelage. Um, leaving from there, that's when the planning happened. Um, and yeah, uh, Percy and Vex, by the way, um, are also heading to meet Delilah Briarwood in the southern region of Wildmount, just on the border of Winandir. Um, and that is essentially where we are now. So, um, as today's story begins, we see the snowy city of Rosanna, the tall, dark towers, and the bright yellow lights illuminating the interiors. Um, zooming by, we see all these candles and, and uh, you know, tents where uh, civilians are uh, standing around, um, blankets around people's shoulders, plates of food being passed out. Um, do you think that the party would join the strike force to fight Delilah, or do you think you would follow to fight Parsons? Well, I mean, the original plan was to uh, have the small strike team go after Delilah, while we, uh, as a bigger uh, army, go after Karsis. Yeah. I, yeah, I do think that we were talking about Percy leading the strike force on his own, and uh, the party leading the army against Karsis. And then that uh, group of small people uh, is about, about 10 to 15. Maybe less than that. Right. Um, and they are all vampire hunters, by the way. So, Or like, at least not vampire hunters, just like know about lore and do hunt vampires, probably. Uh, and you, I think, sent um, some hellish knights to join against the line. Am I correct in that? Or? Yes, because they're very evil, and hell people love evil. <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, so you send um, Commander Kendrick and Commander Calroy um, off to uh, fight against Delilah. Um, Percy nods to you guys and rounds up the troops. 
and heads out um, to the southern region of Wildmount to deal with Delilah. Uh, he hands Sending Stone to the Bright Queen and to you guys, just in case anything goes south. Um, and then Percy and Vex head off with some of your demonic knights and um, vampire hunters, or those familiar with vampires, and they head off. Um, is there anything you guys would like to accomplish in the city before heading off to meet the evil wizard Carsis? If we get a level, I'm just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> Good. Hey, that's my line. <laughs> um, uh, how's everyone doing on potions? Uh, let's check here. I have no idea, but if I have some, I have not used them. Because I know I that feel like um, they have some right. What the fuck? Who was that? Me? I thought you I'm were the music. Oh. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, uh, wait. Is it? Are they in my bag? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, here they. Okay. So yeah, I got fifteen. I got fifteen. Potions of greater he healing. I've got eight superior. And then I have. And then I have two regular. Oh, I have shoot. I should have also. greater and five superior. Wait, how many greater do you have? Oh, wait. I have 16. They're just in two different stacks for some reason. And then five superior. Alright, let me see what I. Oh, crap. I clicked on the wrong. There we go. Also, um, I still have a crap ton of holy water for, uh, for no reason. <laughs> Naturally. Only the fuck with Zelron. I only need one flask of holy water for that. <laughs> Alright, uh, as for me? Uh, my stuff is just, I have seven greater healing potions and six superior. <laughs> mostly because I want to sell some of my graders for some money. And I bought two extra potions with mine, so I didn't really buy much. Yeah, what made you think selling potions was a good idea? Well, superior. I got 200 gold out of it. Yeah, it, yeah, and yeah. superior is better. I only bought two of them, so I mean, money well spent. <laughs> okay. But no, I don't need potions because I think I think if I don't have enough, I'm I'm pretty sure you guys can cover for it. Okay. Uh, on a different note, uh, because we're all probably going to need as much of our, uh, magic items on us as possible, who wants to take the Cloak of Displacement? What's the Cloak of Displacement again? Uh, it's, uh, 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 causes attacking creatures to attack you at disadvantage. But if you take damage, property ceases until the start of your next turn. Which, okay. that's either way still good. So who here is bad at getting hit? Or I guess good at getting hit, uh, I, guess, well, I suppose. I mean... Me, because I'm the tank. Okay, well, okay. So besides him... We know who dies the most here. I think we should go to the tank anyways, though. Yeah. Yeah, which... <laughs> who dies the most which, here. if that's the case... Hmm? Who exactly dies the most? <clears throat> um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> that's a good question. That's another it way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, no, because <laughs> if I took it, then I'd have to pull out my boots of haste. Oh, well, I guess I'll take with both. Well, no, because you can only have three magic items attuned at a time. And for right now, I've got my boots, I've got my cloak, and I've got my sword. Oh, okay. Alright, so I guess so I'll I just nap that off of you then. If, you, if you're giving mm -hmm. it away, at least. Like, for right now, at least, you know. Well, I mean, either way, losing... I mean, either way, the Boots of Haste give me the uh, additional action, double movement speed, and uh, plus two to armor class. I think it's plus two to armor class. Why did you I'm let the really clan have that again? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it would have any consequences in the moment, so I mean... Interesting. Yeah, they all yeah so... 
Yeah, so that's what my boots do when activated on a bonus action. Um, which, if I swap those out for the cloak, that would still give me a decent advantage be uh, for not getting hit, because, I mean, attacking me at disadvantage. And, and plus, if I ever use my reckless attack, uh, that kind of cancels out everything to where it'd end up having... It, that would have him do a straight roll, which may or may not be bad. So I just shouldn't reckless attack if I'm wearing that. Alright, well then. Uh, yeah. And it's later. That one's up to you, buddy. I, I mean, let's see. The cloak just. See, the nobody cloak just doesn't let me get detected by scry spells oh shit or lock on like magic missile okay so that might actually be good to keep on hand uh keep on me and then because like the only other person that might the only other couple of people that might benefit from my boots would either be zelrin or crystalina but then again both of them could almost benefit from the cloak as well The Displacer Cloak, that is. I'm getting the staff too, right? Yeah, you have your staff. Okay. <laughs> That's the only one I actually care about. Yeah. Everything. Uh, Angel, how many, Angel, how many items <laughs> does Zelrin have attuned to him right now? Only two. The uh, Wings of Flying and the Wraps of the Amok. Okay. I... Yeah, and then Crystalina and Adelaide only have one each. Am I too I dead? You should give it, I would say you should give it to the spellcaster, because, I mean, if she... If, the Displacer if Cloak, it, yeah. Yeah, because if you do, I think it's better for her to have it at, you know, disadvantage, because, I mean, that way she can stay alive a lot longer. Even though she doesn't yeah. go down as much as I do, uh, it'll yeah, still... Yeah, that's help. a good point. Yeah, me, I, I can. I'm, I'm expendable. I just meant to. I'm just meant to do damage and die and come back to life. Yeah, and honestly, having the I boots of haste on the way. tank, or I'll be very yeah. sad. Yeah, and then having the boots of haste on me is probably still best bet to have. So yeah, uh, we all in agreement for Adelaide taking the displacer cloak. Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. You get free item. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was one of the it was one of the free items that we took from uh, Ironwood. Oh shit! I still have the Ring of Fire Resistance on. It, it, you know what? That's fine. We don't need it. I we immediately we, we thought don't. of you singing. Daniel. Right, so what? <laughs> I immediately thought of you singing. When you were like Hi. 14. Okay. Now, that, you know what I'm that, talking about? Uh, when we were all doing that, like. The animal farm. The, yeah, no, sorry, yeah, yeah. the voice farm. But, um, uh, okay, so. Whatever the fuck does, the song goes. Does, re does resistance stack? And I can get immunity if I. Damn it. No. Unfortunately, no. Okay. Hey, well, trust me, I tried, that... I tried pull, I tried pulling that with rage and hybrid transformation. He's not budging. God damn it! All right, well then, I guess I can't uh, make use of it. I already have resistance for it, so I don't need it. But yeah, no, I'm good overall. Uh, I have enough in my backpack. I don't want to get greedy. And then I still have the deck of many things. <laughs> Uh, and when you mention that, he takes a. Okay. When he, uh, as soon as you mention the deck of many things, uh, Zelron's gonna take a shot from the flask of fireball in his pocket. <laughs> oh god! This man here. Hey, honestly, that went. Hey, honestly, nothing bad actually happened from pulling from the deck. Did you die? I I think you died. Yep that that was from no that was from that was from the dragon's breath. 
Ah, well, I mean, it's a good thing that you died from only one of the substances and not both. So, uh, you guys see that, uh, so the Bright Queen, um... Angel! Oh! I like you. It's supposed to be me. I'll explain later. Uh, so the Bright Queen starts heading off, um, Allura is coming as well, um, and you guys lead a huge army towards Grimgalir. Um, the city where Carsis is, uh, yeah, uh, researching, uh, on this magical ritual. Um, you see that, uh, yeah, so it's quite a large army, um, that you guys are taking with. The teleportation takes a little bit of time, um, but, uh, nevertheless, Laura is able to, along with the help of the Bright Queen's Council, um, create a whole bunch of teleportation circles and take you guys into... Um, Question, uh, isn't Carsis no look, like, kind of located, like, outside of where Rosanna is? Isn't Grimgalir all the way across the ocean? Grimgalir is in Wild Rift. Uh, it's somewhat close. Oh, it is? To yes. Okay, okay, I didn't know, because, like, it sounded a lot, a lot like those Nor uh, those other Norse names that are over in Isilra. Fair enough. My bad, so, confusion. Sorry, c carry on. <laughs> Okay. Um, so as you guys arrive, uh, you see that uh, one by one, you see the red magic uh, the teleportation vanish, and then you arrive in this, uh, it looks kind of like a stronghold city here. Um, you see off in the distance, there are these um, various kind of like structures and uh, distant castles. Um, and it looks like part of the city is almost kind of like built into the mountain here. Um, I have part of this. Uh, not what I meant to do. Ah, uh, whatever. Um, Char, please. I'm begging you. There we are. All right. I promise. This is... There we go. There you are. That's what Grimgalir kind of looks like here as you arrive. Um, and you guys uh, see that the army is standing kind of like directly behind you. Um, I'm going to have everybody roll me a perception check. Right. Oh, damn. Nat 20 for me. I right, wait. No, shit. Double rolled. Never mind. Uh, 14. Alright. 14, 20. Crystalina, do you want me to roll for you? Or... S still loading. Yeah, you can roll for me <laughs> if you don't want to wait. Oh, wait. I'm here. Okay. I am here. I am here. Okay. Damn, that's the first bad one in a while. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Zelron and Adelaide, um, and I think Lucas as well, uh, you guys see um, off in the distance, um, you don't see the shape of Karsus. Um, you don't see the wizard quite yet, um, but what you do see is that there is kind of like this uh, doorway um, into the side of like some kind of like cavern um, from which you can see uh, there is a uh, red glow that looks almost kind of like a beating heart <laughs> kind of like pulses um, and you see uh, every time it glows red there is a shadow Question. Uh, throughout the journey to Grimglier, I'm guessing we found chances to have a long rest, right? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, let me just reset that. Okay. That takes care of that. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, it's just the party and then, like, the army of, like, 400 people, if I remember correctly, right? Yes. Okay. Lucas is... Oh, oh go ahead. You see, uh, Lord is here as well. Um, the Bright Queen kind of, like, stands uh, kind of, like, to the side. Um, and you see... Uh, yeah, the Bright Queen kind of looks at the party, um, pointing off to the cavern. Uh, and she says, Well, oh, any suggestions? Angel, you're muted. Hi. Um, Zelron is going to look over to Lucas, and he's going to say... Uh, he's going to uh, say, So what do you think we should do? Should we, like, go, like, sneak? Or should we just go all in and just cause a big ruckus? I mean, we have an army of, like, 400 people here. You expect all of them to somehow sneak out and then take care of Karsis? Well, listen, okay, I... Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. All right, um, he's going to look over to the Bright Queen, he's going to say, All right, so, here's the plan. Uh, we're just going to go in and rush, and we're just going to catch as many people off guard as we possibly can. All right. Um, so she nods, and she looks back to the army, um, who kind of, like, stand at attention and kind of salute. Um, and, uh, yeah. So you guys uh, walk up to this kind of like cavernous mouth entrance. Um, and yeah, uh, you see the Bright Queen kind of uh, like uh, commands the army to uh, wait um, until a signal is called uh, to enter. Um, do you think the party enters uh, at the same time as the army or is there some sort of delay? Oh no, we're just, um, here, actually, quick out. question, uh, quick question though, can we visibly see, uh, p uh, car uh parts of Karsis' army? Um, on your perception check, because you rolled pretty good, um, you see that as you get to this cavernous mouth entrance, um, Karsis himself is like 30 feet away, um, looking at a book on a desk. And um, you don't see his army at first, um, but you've trained against like wizards and fought against them before. You see these faint silhouettes of kind of like invisible, um, what looks like soldiers and bodyguards inside. Okay, so before he starts, before we start um, going in guns blazing, he's gonna say to the Bright Queen, "All right, so." You guys take care. Of, you guys take care of his men. We'll go after. Um, we'll go after Carson himself. Make sure that he can't give out any orders or anything. Keep him distracted, you know, while you guys take care of everything else. She nods. Um, looks in the army. Um, and she looks at the party, and she says, "All right. I suppose this is it. Everyone ready?" Yep. Everyone. Three, two, one. Ah! He starts running in. <laughs> and I will say before we all go charging in, Lucas will activate his crimson right on his uh on the dragon blade. All right. Which deals. Yeah, if I do have time to do so, I will also cast no. major missile beforehand. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that, that's four points of necrotic damage to me. Alright. Um, yeah. Dragonblade glows with crimson energy. 
um, Adelaide, mm -hmm. you cast Mage Armor, this kind of like magic set of armor that you conjure in front of yourself and kind of like step into. Uh, you guys rush mm -hmm. in, Karsis turns around, literally about to say something, and you see the armies rush in, and um, Zellron, you are immediately able to point out their location. Um, the invisibility spell on Karsis's bodyguards drop. A big CGI fight happens. Um, Karsis looks at you all angrily. Um, I need everybody to roll for initiative. Let's go. Let's go. He just said he's going directly after Karsis. Like, 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 ignoring everybody else. He's just going straight uh, towards the thing. Hell going yes. straight towards the big man. All right. God. Damn it! Why do I roll so terribly? <laughs> all good, all good. Hey, you think you roll? You think oh, you roll I didn't terribly? Even... I'm worse. I, I didn't even see yours. <laughs> I'm a nine. Nine. Damn. Uh, what's a good map to use here? This one, I guess. As good as any. Give us the map, Carlo. No. <laughs> I'm loading the map. Load it quicker. I, I that was terrible. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna. <laughs> that was terrible. Wow. <laughs> okay. So with that being said, uh, I'll show you where Carsis is so that you can position yourself wherever you'd like to be, Carsis. Um, and because I didn't realize this until now, there is canonically a bunch of lava directly behind him. Um, so, you know. So, Karsus is going oh, to be standing directly right here. Um, you see he's shouting um, orders to... He's not supposed to be dead. Why are you dead? He, <laughs> he died on sight. <laughs> we just hey, looked at him. We just died over. from the cringe. <laughs> uh, just... he, um... I don't want to fight these guys. <laughs> That's it. Uh, you see, he like shouts orders to a bunch of his uh, soldiers here. Uh, but yeah, I'll add you guys onto the map so you can position yourself wherever you want to be. Okay. Out here. Well, to keep it fair, I'm just going to keep it there. What the heck? Yeah, Laura, get behind us. <laughs> there we go. She just front lines. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> God. Since since Zelron was kind of in the head. Good. I was gonna say last I checked, Laura's not a blade singer. <laughs> What's up, Zell? Revel could be. Um, but no. Uh, Zell, since he was kind of at the forefront, he just kind of ran up. So that's how he's so super close to him. Okay. He that's just fair. ran up to him. Like, ah! <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, you see, uh, oh yeah, the Bright Queen is helping the army kind of like fight um, the bodyguards behind Karsus as well. Um, so yeah, you guys rush in this cavern, big ass CGI action fight scene. Um, and yeah, Karsus is- a lot of <laughs> Karsus, this evil wizard, is holding this book. Uh, you see one of his eyes is kind of like having this green glow that kind of like, uh, like, quivers um and you see he holds his hand out towards the party about to cast a spell um adelaide you're the first to act okay i'm gonna really really hope this works i'm gonna cast fairy fire it's a deck 17. oh okay oh shit damn Fuck. it okay all right <laughs> thought i'd give it a try um i will also give zelron bardic inspiration before i and my turn. Yeah. Alright. Uh, you see that the fire kind of like uh, moves by his shoulder. Um, he directs it into the wall. Um, any movement or no? Uh, no, that's it. You got it. Finishing Adelaide's go. Crystalina, you're up. Let's see. Uh, staff can be used to fight, correct? Or am I completely confused? No, you're right, you're right. You're right. How do I how, how do I use that? Oh. Oh shit. I shit, she doesn't have it equipped. <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh. for now. Okay. Um, Honestly, it I'll took me a it took me a while as well to realize that you have to equip weapons to use them. 
Uh, yeah. so I can't, I, 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 I get it. <laughs> I... Yeah, I'm not even seeing it in no, her... No, nothing about the technicalities of d, &D. I haven't given her well, any also, I'm... stats yet. Yeah, so... you haven't even... I'm Bro. Just... <laughs> I forgot to write these stats, so for the time being, I'm gonna have you... I'm gonna hand you this quarter staff, and we're gonna use it in place of the staff part. Right. Oh, when all else fails, just hit him with a big stick. Ha! <laughs> 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 right, okay. Uh, <laughs> so you see uh, the uh, weapons, armor, and tools, Christine? Wire? Interchangeable. Yeah, and then. Alright, um. So I'm out. gonna hit the, the closest thing that we're. So Wait, there's just one, right? Yeah, just the wizard. Yeah. yeah. Well, then just the wizard, yeah. man. Okay. Alright. Hell yeah. Oh, and that hits. Roll damage. Oh, yes. Alright. Uh, you get another attack mm -hmm. if you choose to take it. You still cannot hear me when I'm in that other website. It's annoying as fuck. Oh well. Mm. No worries. All good, all good. But yeah, you have you do Oh, nice. Oh yeah, that also hits roll damage. Alright. Uh, Christine, you rush up. Yeah, the unarmed strike <laughs> did more damage than the staff. <laughs> uh, so you rush up. Um, bah, bah, uh, just two straight up punches directly down towards him. He's about to like cast a spell. Um, and you rush up, kind of like canceling it um, as the spell kind of like leaves uh, the palm of his hands. Um, <laughs> and it kind of like rushes back into his head. Um, cool. Anything else, Christine? No. You got it. Finishing Crystal Let's go. Karsis is turn. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> let's go, old man. What you got? <laughs> Karsis is going to pass. Let's see here. Uh, he looks up, his eye glowing green, and says, <laughs> Child's Blade. And casts at a seventh level, uh, reverse. Oh gravity. shit! Oh god damn it! Why? <laughs> I need everybody to make me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, well, that you know I. <laughs> as for the usual time for me to lose this. Oh, I don't. Uh, oh hell! Wait, that wasn't me. Wait. Oh my god! I fucking god, rolled. Oh my god! god. Why did everyone? Oh shit! Wrong one. Sorry. You're good. You're good. Um, yeah, that that was on. That was me. That was me. On oh, accident. You're good. You're good. I forgot I was on her page for a second. All right. That's me. No wonder. Okay. So. Yeah. Just use use the nat twenty. I accidentally rolled for. Her. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and then yeah, sixteen for me. Sixteen. Twenty-two. Adelaide, you rolled an 18, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, I did. All right. Um, so, Zelron... Oh, shit. Uh, you see... Oh, no. It always happens to me. Why does this keep happening to me? I can never win. <laughs> you see, uh, it's that very... Again, playing with the anime visual kind of thing. Those black lines kind of, like, appear around your, like, silhouette. And kind of, like pull you upwards um kind of like uh doo -doo. uh so kind of in this fall uh, okay how far does he fall upwards okay i have wings can i deploy those oh and, and also i have feather falling as well so i don't hit the ceiling with my ass uh, go ahead and make me either athletics or acrobatics. All right. Uh, yes. Where the fuck did? Okay. Yeah. 
Success. Okay. And al along with that, uh, he's going to use his... Wait, is this for uh, the wings, or is this for just something else? Yeah, this is for the wings. So I'll let you know, because of that, you're not going to take any damage. Um, so, yeah, as, as he kind of, like, lifts you up and reverses the gravity, you uh, take out your wings, and you, uh, yeah, just flap, kind of, like, uh, resisting against the wind that pulls you up to the ceiling, and he goes... Uh, Hmm, perhaps this would be more interesting than I thought. Um, I don't think you're going to get rid of me that easily. <laughs> <laughs> Finishing Karsus's go. I know it's a late turn, but he'll be more, I promise. Uh, Zelron, you're up. Lucas, you're on deck. Alright, so immediately, how far up is in the air? Is he in the air? Uh, you are, I would say, like, how far does he fall? Okay, 30 feet in the air, but you've got movement, so you can get back to him, no problem. Yeah. So yeah, he's gonna use his wings to fly back to where his to where he is and keep his wings out to keep him grounded until the spell ends. <laughs> All right. Uh, so he's technically on the floor, but technically not. <laughs> uh, but okay, so he's gonna go ahead and uh do his super saiyajin punch. All right. Slash. All right. Um. All right. Is that hit? Yeah, both hit. Okay. And so yeah, he's just going in with the uh, with his blade, just sing, 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 sing. Uh, next. Let me quickly analyze what. Okay, so. Hey guys, so uh, so I don't waste time looking in the chat. W did y'all? What kind of damage did he strike you guys with? If you guys did get struck, I have not gotten hit yet. Neither. Yeah, no. I think he was trying to just use the anti grav spell to get us up off of the ground. Yeah. Which all of us saved for. Yeah. Okay. I need to bring back the PTSD. Uh, um, and he... Okay, let's let's try something out. I want to see if this actually, uh, like, works against him in terms of, like, maybe he's immune. Not immune. Not resistant. You know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, he's going to cast... Uh, well, first he's going to use, you know, quick uh, bonus action, quick and spell. And he's... Gonna take away a sorcery point, and then he's gonna cast Scorching Ray. Hey. Okay. Uh, three rays of fire hurl him at. Okay, yeah. For each ray. Okay, so he's gonna have three of them. Yep. Boom. Ooh. Boom. Oh, Boom. Shit. Hell yeah. Only one of them got hit. Good. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> one right. of them was a fucking nat twenty. Hell yeah. Right. All right. Alright, yay. Oh, it's only fire. I thought it was radiant damage. Oh, shit. Well, that was no. a little useless. But, um... It's called Scorching Ray. Yeah, but I mean, you can get scorched by the rays of God himself. Yeah. yeah. You want a high-powered radiant weapon? You want a high-powered radiant spell? Get Guiding Bolt. Um, That's probably the one I was thinking of. <laughs> uh, so you see that... Yeah, Zelran, you... Uh, hit him twice with your sword and then you throw out this uh, incredibly like powerful uh, scorching ray into his shoulder um, and it looks like it does hurt him uh, kind of like burning off part of his kind of like robe here um, anything else uh no uh, he's going to stay right there and uh, yeah wait um what is the dodge action? Just a quick rundown. Uh, it dodge action would allow you to um, would allow enemies to have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Is that you only deploy deploy that during your action, or is that like a separate action you can do? You could do uh, it because action, you're. Uh, but yeah, you do have the ability to do it as a bonus action because you're a monk. Um, yeah, but, but I already used that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. never mind. I'm good. All right. Um, at the end of Zelron's turn. Legendary oh. action. 
Karsus is going to take a legendary action. <laughs> Cause he's actually Laura counterspell him. <laughs> Wait, does Laura even have counterspell? Hold up, I gotta pull up something real quick. Okay, cool. Um, you see that he has to take two legendary actions to cast a full level spell. Um, he's gonna point it at. Let's see. He's gonna point it at Lucas. Let's see first of all if Laura can counterspell this. This is a high level spell, so. Does she even have counterspell? She does, but she has to roll still. Ah, shit. No. Um, she tries <laughs> to uh, counterspell. Um, you see, like, uh, this sparkly magic tries to kind of, like, wrap around Karsus' spell. Um, that kind of, like, dispels. And it shoots uh, this kind of, like, magical laser out towards Lucas. I need a wisdom save from Lucas, if you don't mind. Okay, this is gonna be fun. A twenty one. God damn it! All right. Good shit. <laughs> uh, as a lord tries to uh, cancel out the spell, it hits your chest. Nothing happens. Uh, he just tried to cast polymorph on you. Um... Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Damn! Oh, that would have been bad. That would have been bad. Turn into a sheep. What does that do? Turns into an animal. That would have. Yeah, that would have turned me into an animal. <laughs> Out of curiosity, what animal were you planning to give him? Uh, I was going to turn him into a wolf. I was going to fully turn Lucas into a wolf. Wow. Uh, Damn. <laughs> oh. so, not much, so not much change then. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Wait, so in that case, if I was a wolf... At least, at least you'd be here I... enough to pet. Yeah, no, and I wouldn't have actually any of my other... Anyway. <laughs> Wow, okay, okay. Um, that brings us to the end of that. So, Lucas, you're up. Bonus action, Boots of Haste. Hell oh, yeah. Uh, lightning energy surrounding your boots. Move up to him. And I am going to attack him three times. Reckless. My God. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Okay, first attack. 25. Second attack. 15. Third attack. 25. Uh, yeah. 225 hit. Okay. First one. 15 slashing. Four fire. One lightning. Uh. Oh, wait. I said these were reckless. Haha. -ha. Never mind. That's still 15. Fuck. Okay. That, that's that's fine. Okay, second attack. Nine slashing, three fire, four lightning. And you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go action surge. Okay. And do another two attacks. Reckless. Uh, 22. And 23. Uh, he will shield for the first one, but the 23 still hits. Hey, fuck you, Karsus. <laughs> Eight slashing, one fire, one lightning. Uh, you see that you rush up. Um, on one of the attacks, he poof, creates this blue arcane shield directly in front of him um, that deflects your attack, um, and you take the momentum uh, and drive Dragon Blade up into Karsus's uh, throat, and you see blood <laughs> splurting uh, from the outside of his neck. Um, anything else, Lucas? Uh, no, that'll do it. Alright. At the end of Lucas's turn... Of course. He had... Karsus took a taste of that blade and did not like... Did not like that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if you tried to eat a sword... Or it all Um, so... Karsus... Is going to... Uh, so that's a legendary action. He's got to spend two. So that's his last of the round. But he's going to point his finger out towards Lucas. And he is going to. Huh, where is it? I literally just had it right here. Okay, cool. Um, Lucas, go ahead and make me a deck save. I make it with advantage because I'm pasted. That's correct. Mm. 
Mm. Nat 20. Damn! Well, <laughs> God damn it. All right. Um, he... <laughs> fucking God. He points a finger out towards you, and you see uh, kind of like this magic energy that looks kind of like just dust and ash, and uh, coalesces into a laser and is about to strike your chest when you step out of the way of it, and it hits uh, the wall behind you. He attempted to cast this in a great um, I fucking knew it. Something told me in my head. I was like, he's going to cast Disintegrate. Something tells me. <laughs> um, wow, this wizard really has it out for me. <laughs> uh, so trying to turn you into a furry, and then he's trying to turn you into Thanos snap. Oh, I mean, it, the, okay, a bit late on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Laura throws lightning bolts towards Karsus. Provoking a dexterity saving throw from him. He has no more legendary actions for the round. If he still has roll a dexterity saving throw, he fails. Hey. 32 points of fire damage. Um, uh, just, yeah, this fireball that leaps kind of like in this upward arc and then kind of like lands on him. Um, you guys notice that even in the blast of this like explosion, um, you do not, uh, you know, feel the heat of it at all. Um, that is going to bring us to the top of the round. He gets his legendary actions back. Adelaide, you're up. Crystalina, you're on deck. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cast Eldritch Blast. So, 27 and a 27 to hit. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> um, yeah, both of those hit. He has no reaction. All right, perfect. Six and a fourteen, so twenty total. All right. Um, and okay. uh, you see that uh, purple uh, spell leaves your hand and into his robe. Um, and yeah, anything else? I will also give Lucas Bardic inspiration, and then on my turn. Hey. <laughs> All right. Finishing Adelaide's go. Crystalina, you're up. E. <clears throat> oh yeah, 23 hits. Gosh, this guy's looking. Yeah, this guy Yeah, this guy ain't having fun. <laughs> 21 also hits. He's got no fucking reaction because he used to. <laughs> oh yeah, for so shield. Pissed, we're, we're literally just like landing all our hits because this guy does not deserve to win. <laughs> um, hell yeah! So, Kristalina. At I least we're you. hitting him. <laughs> so, what does it look like as you rush up and punch this wizard? Um, I go for his chin. Oh, I go for his ear. I mean, <laughs> hoping to. Cause him to lose his balance. That's what happens when you go for someone's ear. Uh, stumbles back um, and is uh, kind of like trying to regain his composure. Um, anything else, Christina? That is it. You got it. Carsis is turn. Yippee. <laughs> He's going to. Can I get him? Everyone's in range of this. All right. Um, of course we are. <laughs> oh, no. He, uh, with this green, like, flame that stands, uh, kind of, like, dances directly in front of his iris, um, and you see he hoists his staff into the air, and radiant light shines from the heavens above, and, um... Yeah, you see, he points it out towards you, and heat kind of like overtakes your body. I need everybody to make me a Constitution saving throw. Uh, probably. Oh, double fuck. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I fail. Uh huh. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, Crystalie. Adelaide success. <laughs> oh no. Adelaide success. Zelran success. Lucas failure. Laura failure, Kristalina failure. Okay, so just Lucas. Oh no. As he casts Sunburst. Uh, 
Uh, Lucas, <laughs> Crystalina, and Alora, you all take 31 points of radiant damage. Um, Ow. <laughs> Zelron and Adelaide take half, so 15. Um, He's actually immune to radiant. Are you actually? No. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say. I can't tell what you're fucking with me or not, man. Okay, so. <laughs> also. <laughs> Alora, Crystalina, and Lucas are also blinded by this. As, um. Oh. Nah. Okay, wait, can he, um, can he use his reaction to absorb elements? Yes. Oh, mm. yeah, baby! Think, okay, hold up. Wait. I don't think that actually works with radiant damage. Does it? Because I mean, it should. A type of elements. Well, I guess absorb elements uh, would say the types of damage that it accepts, but... Hold on. I mean, it doesn't uh, really... Say. Yeah, we can actually look it up. Because if it's not there, then that's fine. No, no, you're right. It doesn't say, so I think, yeah, Radiant actually counts in this. Alright. That's up to the DM. The D, uh, how, how, you, how you feeling? I you think I should? To do it. I'll lie. So okay. you only get a fucking quarter of it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'll cast and... it at second level. Alright. So only seven. Ooh, shit. Radiant across to you. Um, but yeah, Alora. Well, I guess just Crystalina and Lucas um, see that, uh, yeah, your vision suddenly goes uh, dark. Um, we don't see shit. <laughs> as, yeah, this sunburst uh, blinds you guys. That finishes courses goes. I'll run, you're up. Lucas, you're on deck. <coughs> oh, crap. Hang on. Okay, hang on. You said I took how much again? So it would only be because you put it so seven. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. New so. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay, the best evil laugh again. I've heard. The first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The target takes an extra. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So when I hit with my sword, I can get the extra attack in, and it's because I cast it a second level, I get an extra d6. Perfect. So. Okay. So, he's gonna get hit with the Booming Blade Blade. Alright. Why does this happen? Can he take- wait, I wanna see if he gets hit with any of these real quick. Um, 19 matches, but... Bardic Inspiration! Yeah, I was about to say. Can he use- uh, he's gonna do that, so that's a d6, correct? Yep. Okay. <laughs> it's still, I mean, it's still enough, it's right? I want to put the knife in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so along with that, he's going to roll his uh, if his 2d6s. Fuck. If shard would load, that is. There we go. <laughs> Kidding me? <laughs> that's, that's so, oh, that sucks. <laughs> All right, so quick and spell again. <sighs> All, All right. Uh, he. If I had glasses. He will use his reaction to cast shield. Um, yeah. <laughs> you see, uh, he had a taste of that sword. Did not like it. Uh, but yeah, you hit him. Hit him the once, and then the shield comes up, uh, and he deflects both attacks. Um, yeah, you hold your sword up as the sunburst came down, and the uh, spell energy kind of like coalesced in the blade. And then, so you return it back to sunder. Um, anything else, Luke? Uh, Zelron? Wait. Yeah, hang on. He only shielded one of them or two of them? He shielded the last two attacks. You can shield two of them? I thought you could only shield one. Last for the whole no, shield last. Round. Yeah, she'll oh, last yeah. until the beginning of your next turn. Damn it! All right, got yeah, fucking. Okay, never mind. Okay, go carry on. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> finishing Lucas. Uh, fucking Christ! Finishing Zelda. I was so proud. <laughs> Zelda's go. Lucas, you're up. First off, I would like to rage. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
And then I am going to attack him three times reckless, so it cancels out being blinded. Correct. Okay. Nat 20. Fair enough. All right. Nat 1. And a 16. Ouch. Uh, you do have your bardic inspiration if you choose to use it. No. So it's up to you. I will. No, I, I will. I will. Okay, gotta roll a four higher. Oh, you Four. Dirty 20. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage. So, first off, yeah, first off, the nat 20, which is that plus Divine Fury, which also gets doubled. 18 points of slashing damage, 9 points of fire damage, 5 points of lightning damage, and 10 points necrotic damage. Total of 42. You see, as you strike into him with your Dragon Blade and your Divine Fury, um, he's like staggering, or you can hear him kind of like staggering back, and you hear him kind of like proclaim, he's like, he's literally blind, how is he still hitting me? Uh, so go ahead and roll damage for your second attack. As he says that for, during the last second attack, he's like, I can heal, st still hear you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and then for the second attack, eight slashing, eight fire, and four lightning for a total of 20 oh. points of damage. Okay. Um, you see that, yeah, fucking... I see nothing. <laughs> you just hear the uh, sword make contact with his body. Anything else, Lucas? No, that'll do it. Okay. At the end of Lucas's turn, Carsis um, is going to pass. I mean, let's just do it, right? Uh, okay. Okay. Um. At the end of Lucas's turn, he's going to spend two legendary actions, pointing his staff up towards the ceiling. Um, and you see that, uh, as he does, uh, magic leaves the tip of his staff, and uh, the ceiling begins to uh, begin to like crumble, and debris begins to fall down. I need la 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 la. Okay, I need everybody to make me a dexterity saving throw as he casts transmute rock. Uh, I think that, yeah, I think that ends up being an even roll for me because I'm blind and hasted. Fuck. <laughs> he gets crushed by the Oh, rubble. that's still bad. Uh, Crystalina, Adelaide, success. Zelran, Lucas, failure. Um, Zelran, Lucas, take four. At least I'm only taking half damage. Oh, it is. At least I'm taking half damage. It is considered bludgeoning because it's, uh, debris falling from the ceiling. So, uh, Zoran take 25, Lucas take 12, Crystalina and Adelaide take 12 as well. Uh, during this, uh, as a reaction, he's gonna cast Shield to block the. Oh, never mind. It's, it's is it magic? Yes. Yeah. Does, it, does it. Oh, it's only. It's, it's only on attack rolls to hit. Yeah. Because. Oh, yeah. 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 Because okay, it just sure. adds to your AC. Got it. All right. Yep. Yeah, okay. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Um, that brings us to the end of that. Uh, Laura is going to. Uh... Yep. Yeah, tried and true right now. She's going to throw more lightning at Carsis, provoking a Dex saving throw. Go for it. Six. Failure. Um. damage. Alright. Uh, throws a lightning bolt out towards Karsus. Uh, kind of like fries part of his robe. Um, and you are seeing, uh, by the way, um, I want to ask uh, everybody's passive perception. Well, I'm blind, so it's not going to matter. Fair enough. Uh, 12 for me. 12. Adelaide, passive perception. Mine is 16. 16. Um... As you are seeing this fight happen, 
you turn your head kind of like to the right and you see uh, the Bright Queen and the army are losing this battle. Um, and you just, yeah. So what? You see just like uh, injured people are kind of like ushered out of the cave um, and you start to see uh, these bodyguards are like growing in size. Um, some of them are casting polymorph on themselves and shape change. Um, whatever the case may be, the Bright Queen um, is calling for an evacuation. Um, that brings us to the end of that. Uh, top of the round, Karsus gets his legendary actions back. Adelaide, you're up. Crystalline, you're on deck. Um, first of all, I'm going to alert the others about the situation going on with the army. Um, and then I will go ahead and cast another Eldritch Blast at Karsus. Ooh, that is, I'm sorry, that's the damage, it's the wrong one. <laughs> 12 and a 19. 19 matches, of course. Damn. Alright. Um, um, I will bonus action pop a greater unit. Um, cool. This is him. Um, anything else, Adelaide? Uh, that'll be it. Gotcha. Finishing Adelaide's go. Christina, you're off. Oh. Okay. Ooh, nice. All right. Ooh. Don't forget to hit uh, nice. roll critical in that little chat. My so okay. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, for. Damn, how did she get a nat 20 and a dirty 20? We'll see. That is good damage. <laughs> so, in the chat, Christina, uh, there you go. You okay. uh, At the end? Because I rolled again. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and roll damage for that one as well. Hell yes. Am I always rolling critical, or was that for a specific thing that was happening. That was because you rolled that, that, that was that yeah. funny. Um, okay, you, cool. You rush up, poof, poof, uh, like fiery uh, magic kind of like leaving your fist. Um, and you straight up fire dragon iron fist this dude. He's looking hurt. Uh, kind of like limping back. And you see this like very fucking comical ass like uh, ring of like uh, stars around his head as he's like trying to hold on. Um, Anything else, Priscilla? I would be it. All right. Arsis' is turn. Oh, fuck the fuck. Um, damn. Arsis, you gotta do something. Oh, yeah. How long am I blind for, out of curiosity? Uh, for Sunburst, you are blinded for one minute. Uh... Oh, god damn it. So that's still going. Oh, you know what? God damn it. I forgot to do it. Um, you can roll a constitution saving throw at the end of your turn. So go ahead and make me a con save now if you want to try to shake oh, out the blind. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I'll do that. Nope, still blind. Sorry. You're uh, still me. <laughs> Crystalline, you can also make a con save to try to shake off the blindness. I totally forgot to do that. My blinded? Yes. So go ahead and when did this happen? Did I just not realize that I couldn't see anything? It's all good. Um, a few rounds ago, yeah, the sunburst spell uh, like blinded you, so go ahead and make me a con save. You come hey, look at that! You shook it off. Damn. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Hey, like, it was I, never I, there I in the first place. Took off the brightness before I even realized I was. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons is a realistic role-playing game. Um, you see that Karsus is going to now uh, point his staff forward, and you see um, from the heavens above, it shines once again, and a crown descends upon his head, um, and you see a set of stars kind of like uh, lining the crown that he then points out to... He smirks, pointing his staff towards Zelron. And he is going to try to hit you with Crown of Stars. It's going to be 
A 22 to hit, Zelda. He's gonna cast shield. Would that? Hang on, wait. Hang on, let me let me check. So. Uh, yes. So he's gonna cast shield. He's 17. So. Yeah, no, that'll do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cast. Uh, you see that? Uh, Corsus points his staff out towards you. A star leaves his crown and tries to like attack you. Um. Just like a comet pointing down uh, towards your body, and you cast a shield directly in front of you, deflecting it, and it hits the ground. Um, and yeah. Yippee! <laughs> you see that <laughs> hits the ground, creates a crater. Um, that finishes. Oh, why did you... Uh, Crystalina, why'd you attack me? <laughs> <laughs> um, Zelran, you're up. Lucas, you're on deck. No, I am down. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, this is gonna be the same Alright. Why does this happen to me? But, uh, quick and spell. Immediately. Uh, I think I've had a good. Oh my god. Hey! Hell yes. Um, he casts shield, but both of those still hit, so go ahead and roll damage. He cannot shield. Oh, okay. His... Oh, I was, I was gonna say. Then hang on, why waste the shield? Well, I guess you're not really wasting Cause it. He's, Cause he's... Yeah. I mean, it's realistic. Cause he's stupid. Yeah, he's stupid as shit. Um... Oh, there we go. shit. Oh my god. Okay. Um... Does he survive here? Oh, he's good. Okay. <laughs> not for long. <laughs> not for long. Um... As for movement... He's not gonna do... Actually... No, never mind. All right, I'm gonna stay there. Uh, is he still like gravity um, defying? I feel like that. I feel like that's kind of gone now because he's been pretty much. Yeah, you. I mean, he, gotten his ass beat. Yeah, he's had to. He's lost concentration on that. Um, and even if it was still up, you had your wings giving you enough resistance against the air, so you're, you're fine. Um, All right. So when it does eventually go off, though, there was a scene. That I wanted to describe that uh, since he is using his wings to resist himself from flying up, when it does drop, he does end up going full force into the fucking ground. <laughs> <laughs> he just like. Bleh, bleh. Of course, it's that's why he missed the. That's why he missed one of the uh, attacks. Hell yeah! Um, <laughs> all right. Um, at the end of Zoram's turn, um, he is going to. Uh, he's got this... Okay, so he's got this crown on his head, um, and is going to... You see wind coalesces around Corsus' feet, um, and he begins to hover above the ground, casting an investiture of wind. Um, you do not get an op attack, because it's part of the legendary action, but, um, yeah, he casts investiture of wind as... Wind coalesces around his feet, uh, sweeping some of the rock away, and he hovers there in the air. That finishes Zelron's turn, and Lucas, you're off. Does that count as moving? Wait, hang on. Does that count as him moving in a, in, oh, uh, in a way? Oh, Blade, yeah. Technically, yes. So good and roll Booming Blade damage. Oh! I swear, if this guy dies to Booming <laughs> damage. He's alive, but it would be funny as shit. Oh, that would have been hilarious. Be funny as shit. He floats up, dies, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like GTA style, just goes limp. That would have been so funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So good, Lucas, you're out. Uh, bonus action. I'm gonna use my blood curse of the marks. Ignore the roll for now, or not? I don't know. Uh, then I'm going to attack him with the blade, Reckless, because okay. I'm, I'm still blind, mm -hmm. so, nat 20. Finish his ass. That's probably going to finish his ass. So, but, you know, just to see what the other three are. Uh. That's a two. <laughs> and that's oh, a one. God. God damn. Okay, well, either way. Still the nat 20, which is oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. 
plus Divine Fury, plus um, uh, more, plus another six. From Blood Curse of the Marked. No, from, from Blood Curse of the Marked. Uh, let's see. So 19 plus. Oh, shit, this There's no way he lives through this shit. 19 There's plus no 38. Way. He's on death's door. Um, <laughs> you, uh, as he's hovering there in the air, reach up, and you see that blood uh, splurts uh, there onto the ground, um, and he shouts, No, I've come too far! Rising into the air, um, gritting his teeth. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, I'm not blind anymore. You succeed against the blindness. Um, so, yeah, you open your eyes and see this happening. Um, anything else with this? Um... No, I'm not gonna be an asshole. I'm, part of me wants to say, hypothetically, could I not be blind before I hit him? So <laughs> I could get the reckless. No, the that's, 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 yeah, that, that's fair, that's fair. That was a good, that was a bit of a cheap shot anyway. <laughs> um... Alright. No, that's it for me. Um, so at the end of Lucas's turn, he will take two legendary actions, last of the round, to cast at 10th level Lava Stream. Oh shit. Oh shit. The book he's holding in his hand breaks and uh, disintegrates into dust and ash, and he uh, just tosses a staff to the side and focuses, smiling. Uh, turning the ash in his hands kind of like a clock and you see that he throws it behind him and you see that the ash rumbles on the ground turning into lava that he then points at you um, and begins to kind of like uh, the lava like leans downwards um, and begins to move towards you I need everybody to make me a what is it I need everybody to make me a dexterity saving throw. I'm at advantage. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> um, Why did I get a double seven? <laughs> Adelaide success. Lucas failure. Zelron success. Crystalina failure. Um, Zelron. Oh, this is insane. <laughs> Zelron, you fought against fire-based monsters before. Adelaide, you have experience now in Blood War. Um, Lucas and Crystalina, Lava Cat, and Off Guard. This isn't good. So Zelron, because this is fire damage, it's half and a half so quartered. Fucking Tieflings! God. <laughs> so, instead of taking... Oh, shh. Lucas, Crystalina, take 37. Uh, Adelaide, take... 18. Ow. The cell run take 9 points of fire. I gotta fucking stop using mm. fire spells. Um, oh, that is so fucking close. Christina goes down. No! Uh, Remember me. Tell my stories. Wait, I was muted the whole time? <laughs> Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> was I, God I was damn it! I thought. Why did y'all say anything? I had the shard window open. I'm sorry. Oh well, what I said was, uh, yeah, he was raised in hell, so he's not here. <laughs> From the very pits of the devil's anus. <laughs> okay. Um, that finishes. I am that. so fucking close to dying. Very. You should probably pick a potion. Uh, finishing the legendary action, Alora um, casts a cone of cold down towards Karsus. He sh lived, theoretically, if I just roll a constitution saving. Karsus, why are you so fucking. Ah! Ah! Does he live? You notice it's only He's against dead. Alora? Oh! He better die if. <laughs> He lives. He fucking lives. Uh, no! Bullshit. No, no, no! Bull fucking shit. He fucking lives. 
Is this a live flashing both his eyes at least? Yes, he's literally knocking on the floor. How the fuck is he not dead? He last time, and that was like 30 damage ago. <laughs> he, uh, you see that the cold energy uh, surrounds uh, Karsis. Um, the wind around his feet turns into ice as Alora like pulls him back down to the ground, um, going like, Ugh! and oof, he the the back of his like uh, skull hits the stone beneath him, uh, causing blood to splurt. Um, which reminds me, he should take some falling damage. But hang on, is this like? It feels like this is uh he only fails when Alora is doing stuff. So I mean maybe. Maybe he, uh, down bad. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Karsis, Alora, Scandal, ooh. Uh, finishing Alora's go. Kima, dis Kima destroys Taldore. <laughs> Adelaide, you're up, Chris, leaning around deck. Okay, I'm... This might not be a decision, but I'm over behind Chris and give Potion of Superior Healing, so... I believe that's an action, right? Uh... Yes, it's an action. Okay, so 27 for her. And then with hey. my bonus action, I'll pop a potion for myself. Hey. Nobody died today. <laughs> Rushing up to Crystalina's aid, hand her potion, and you can a potion yourself. Um, anything else, Adelaide? And that'll be it. All right. Uh, finishing Adelaide's go. Crystalina, you're off. Kick his ass. Kill him, for Christ's sake. Kill him, or... Please. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Alright, Thank you. Crystalina. Oh, thank God. Fucking <laughs> God. Hey. <laughs> so, yeah, what does it look like as you uh, rush up and kind of, like, punch this wizard to death? The staff, technically. I run up and I ram the thing. Kind of like. With the end of the staff, I ram it into his head as hard as I can. Okay. Nice. Um, so, Alora uh, yanks, uh, turning uh, Cartridge's wind into ice, yanks him down. You rush up, uh, like, <laughs> like slow mo, like Star Wars style, and you rush up and you bash the side of his head with your Staff of Harmony, and you see that Karsus, uh, his skull splits open. Uh, the soul that was used to resurrect him yeah. leaves. The cavern falls quiet. Um, you see that um, as far as the battle goes, um, all uh, the Bright Queen's army have pulled out of the cavern as well. Um, but you look around and you don't see any bodyguards or any soldiers of Karsus either. It looks like they must have left or panicked or something like this. It falls completely quiet. Karsus is dead on the cavern floor. Zeron calls bullshit. So uh, he's gonna get up and he's gonna look around. Like like he's gonna actually like dust himself off, maybe take a potion, and then he's gonna just walk and just try to look all around the area for anybody. Uh, and actually, he's gonna look, before that, he's gonna look to Adelaide and ask, uh, do you have detect magic? Um, do I have a good question? Yes, I do. Okay, so, uh, he's gonna say, alright, you, come with me, uh, gotta make sure that these guys don't return or or if they're hiding we need to make them come out of hiding and kill them all oh thank god seems smart to me okay yes. um, yeah uh adelaide uh you cast detect magic um you see that uh as you do magic leaves your hand um and uh, sparkly kind of like magic energy surrounds the entire cavern wall, floor, and ceiling. Uh, the ceiling does now like solidify and like hold up by now. Um, you uh, see that with your detect magic, um, you see uh, 
that the remaining soldiers of Corsus or bodyguards or whatever the case may be, um, there were, uh, you know, quick teleportation spells um, that were cast. Uh, it looked like they saw Corsus uh, getting beat up and decided to evacuate. Um, so essentially there are no more people in this cavern except for you guys. All right, looks like they all fled. Uh, uh, and you can tell, like, Zoran just kind of, like, leans his head back, similar to what I did. Uh, cowards, them all! I wanted to... Okay, let's just head back. Well, at least we have uh, an idea, at, at least we have an idea of where they're going to be going. While that's going on, uh, does Karsis still have his uh, spell book on him. Go ahead and make me an investigation check, Lucas. Sounds good. 18. <laughs> you look over where his body is laying on the floor, and um, you see that uh, the ash that turned into lava um, coalesces back into the form of a spellbook. And he's like holding it yeah. in his cold dead hands. I'm sticking that in the back of holding. Um, Godric ain't gonna be taking that shit. As you reach out and touch the book, uh, go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw, Lucas. Oh, god damn it. 17. Spellbook curses you out. Um, as you touch this book, um, you get this fucking strange feeling of just being watched. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You can't, like, name it. Maybe one of your party members is watching this happen, or maybe Laura, or, or something or other, but you just can't shake the, the feeling that, like, something saw you take the book. But, yeah, you stored in the bag of holding. It's no issue. Yeah. Yeah, as I do, I look around to see if anyone else actually was watching. You just hear the faint sound of the lava. Um, and you don't see anyone. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, well, Godric ain't gonna be getting his hands on that. Uh... Um, yeah, at this point, uh, Adelaide and, uh, Zell probably would be walking and returning back to the party. Yeah. Yeah, I walk over, I just pulled out of the bag, and I'm like, got a spell book. Oh, thank you. Jeepus. Well, um, we better, we better, like, keep close surveillance on that. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, Godric's probably going to be trying to get this as soon as he can, because... Holy shit, that lava spell... Like, you can see, like, Lucas is still, like, slight... Is still very much burnt from the spell... From the lava spell, and it's like... That was very unexpected and very painful. Oh, um... Adley, do you want to take a quick look and see what you can learn from it? Maybe you can take his spells and use them against them. It'll be a great asset gonna, to us. I was going to give it to her anyway. I... I mean, it couldn't be too bad of an idea. I'll, I'm open yeah. to look at both through it. Yeah, sure. Here. Just hand, uh, hand the spell book to Adelaide. Do you take the spell book? I don't like that question. Yes, I do take the spell book. <laughs> uh, as you reach out and touch it, uh, go ahead and make me a wisdom save as well. Oh my god. Uh, you said wisdom? Yes. 25. Oh my god, man. You guys are rolling so well. Why such high wisdom? What the fuck, bro? 
so it doesn't explode in our hands. Uh, Not this time, please. <laughs> you reach out and grab this book from Lucas. As you do, um, you get that same kind of like feeling. Um, but what you also hear in the back of your head, maybe you're imagining things, maybe the adrenaline of battle got to you, you hear what sounds like uh, six or seven like sets of chains being pulled taut, um, or maybe, just maybe, being released. Not shit. What the fuck did we do? Oh Look my what god. You did, Adelaide, you got us in trouble. Look no, what you did. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna okay. sort of look around like did y'all hear that? Hear what? Yeah, did we did we hear that? I'm asking you, uh do the do okay. So uh uh no, uh what the the lava? Oh yeah, you kinda get used to that. No, it was like like metal, like chains or something. I could have sworn I heard something. I mean, it could have been whatever is in uh, Lucas's bag of holding, probably jingling around. You know that's not audible, right? Otherwise, you'd be hearing them jingling around every time we've been walking around this place, along with everything else in my bag. <laughs> well, uh... Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Well, in the meantime, want to see what else, want to see what other stuff this guy has on him? Just points back to the dead wizard. Oh, yes. Hang on. You got first dips with Emiko. Let me get first dips with this guy. <laughs> Did not. Oh, Did you? <laughs> hey, in that case, it was first come, first serve. Okay, perfect. Just fucking run the books it towards the body and just like <laughs> slide even slides on his knees like and then just reading, looking patting him down and looking for money. Lucas isn't even moving because he already grabbed the book and then gave it to Adelaide, so he doesn't really want anything else. Um you Zelron pat down his body, first of all, finding two hundred gold pieces and a magic staff. Ooh, uh, st okay, well this isn't for me. He just says here, Adelaide, here's a staff. More stuff for you. <laughs> and he tosses it over to where you are. But uh, obviously, he waits for her to, like, you know, notice, and then he then tosses it to her. I'll sort of catch it and see if I can make any use of it. Um, yeah. You. I gotta pull up the specific um, item stats. Oh, for no. Um, you said 200 pieces, right? Yes. Oh! All right, beer. Back. Yeah. Nope. I do not need that. Um, Adelie, you hold the staff in your hand, and it feels uh, powerful. Having watched uh, an old wizard use it a second ago, um, you uh, as you hold this staff in your hand, realize what you are holding. Uh, you know only having heard stories of it, you hold a staff of the Magi. Oh, shit. Sounded pretty good. Do I have any idea what it does? Uh, you see that, um, you think that it allows you to essentially access bunch of fucking spells as well as uh, increase your uh <laughs> in, in, ten, in terms of game mechanics it increases your uh to hit bonus basically oh okay add... please tell me shard has this that'd be really great it does. holy shit look at that all right yeah no she's definitely gonna love that that um, as you guys are sitting around uh, everybody roll me a perception check if you don't mind yep, yep. 
just in time. I see shit. I see trees and nothing else, apparently. Uh. <laughs> Damn, we all rolled shit. <laughs> Zelra, <laughs> <laughs> um, counting up the gold pieces, Crystalina, um, standing at the cavernous mouth entrance. Uh, Lucas distracted as well. Um, Zelra, you look over and even, I mean, you see, uh, you had seen Carson's his head split open, um, but you swear to God, like you can see his body just like twitch. And, um, you know, at first it's like his head, and then it's his arm, um, but after a second it just stops and he remains there motionless. And he's gonna say he doesn't even like say anything to them about it, and like. Uh... He is just going to, while they're like, I guess, admiring the new staff, he's just going to go over there and he's going to walk and he's going to kneel down and like, like put his back toward everyone so we can't see, so you guys can't see anything. You got it? Okay. And then he's just going to just kind of be going at it like, you know, with the, the knife, he's just going to end up like, like stabbing him more and more. Oh my god. I know from this view it looks like it's wrong. <laughs> it looks kind of sus, but like I, he's just stabbing him. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Oh yeah. Um, you... I know, I probably shouldn't have. It's all good. <clears throat> you don't have to act it out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you see that... And his body, uh, you know, blood splurts from his chest. Um, and you... At this, um, hear that same that same sound Adelaide heard, um, <laughs> chains breaking in the back of your head. And then he's gonna put the knife away, and he's gonna like put his like robes and cover it up and stuff. And he's gonna say, Adelaide, um. I think that sound is back again, or whatever it is you were saying. I, now I'm kind of starting to hear it. Wait, really? I, I can't hear it now. I still have no idea what you guys are talking about. It's like, um... Okay, so imagine chains, and not in the good way, and he's, like, they're rattling. Okay. Okay, and that's what I'm hearing. Uh... I was just coming over here to see how much, uh, you know, what I left, and see if I, you know, can nab anything else off of him. But then I heard that, so I'm guessing I'm just gonna stop it from there, and I'm not gonna, you know, raid him any more than I already have. I'm just gonna walk over to the body, take my sword, stab his head with it. Not... Zelrin's head. It's Garces's <laughs> head. Just take my sword. Literally, just take it. Shink. Immediately, Zelrin's gonna, like, pat your shoulder. He's gonna be like, you and I are so much alike. No wonder we hated each other at first. Literally, <laughs> they came over to do the same thing. Oh. Lucas. As you stab into, I gotta find the right music for this. You, <laughs> oh, fucking the flash together. There we go. As you stab down into Carcus's head, blood splurts on the cavern floor once again. <laughs> um, and you also hear that same sound: <laughs> chains being broken and now falling away. Is this sort of the same sound to when uh, Carsis decide to screw around with Lucas to convince him and to get him to unlock some of the chains from before? Yes. So as soon as he does that, he just immediately takes 
several steps backwards, leaving the sword stuck in the ground in Incarsus's head. And you see his expression goes from that of just that sort of, I don't care, I'm just stabbing a guy's head to, like, of shock. And he's like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. What did you hear? I've heard that before. Lean in, interested. It's the same as you got the chain break falling away. But I heard that before, back at Yggdrasil. That's we might have unint- We might have unintentionally fucked up, guys. What Wait, hang on, hang on. That's the, isn't that the same, like, you're talking about that time when you froze during the battle, and I had to come grab you? Yeah, that same moment. Oh. Oh! Oh, 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 oh no. Oh! If it's- Yeah. Uh, well, Sorry. okay. Guys, He's... you're gonna have to spell it out for me. What the fuck did we just do? Think like... Okay, so back when we were at Yggdrasil, Yggdrasil after going to the Feywild and when Karsus decided to first resurrect he messed with my head to somehow get me to unlock some chains which yes. I think are tied to Tharistoon when we when Adelaide grabbed the book when Zelrin was looting Karsus's body when I stabbed Karsus's head. We all heard the exact same chains that I heard back at Yggdrasil, meaning that Karsus's death broke another one of the chains to Theris Doom. Oh shit. We fucked up. He's gonna rip the sword out of uh, Carson's head. He's just gonna step on his head and just... Ah. <sighs> well... We just gotta be very, very careful to be... Sh- to... Not break anymore. How many chains did they say there were? And he's gonna... I guess he's gonna hand the sword over to... Lucas. Yeah. Lucas is just, like, taking the sword back. He's just gonna be like... Hey, Alora. Has this shocked look on her face as well. She says, I heard it. I did too. I, um. But there's. Yeah, we fucked up, didn't we? But we can still. This is a fixable situation. We just have to think. Um. Adelaide, if you don't mind, can you roll me an arcana check? Oh no. Fourteen. <laughs> Oh. On a 14, from Karsus's body, a spectral kind of like pillar appears directly in front of him that only you can see. Um, and you hear, you haven't talked to her in a while, but you remember her voice distinctly. You hear Mistress' voice in the back of your head. Oh, God damn it. Uh, yippee. You hear Mistress says... Is Allura's full name? Allura Vysorin. Okay, will you believe that I just learned what she looks like from looking it up, finally? (laughs) Fair enough. Um, Cool! Now I can imagine old lady Allura. (laughs) Uh, You hear Mistress' voice, Adelaide. You hear her say... Something dangerous and grave and terrible has just befallen the world. I can't explain it to you in words, but if you step towards the pillar, I can show you. Is it safe to do so? It will only take perhaps less than a minute. If 
your friends want to see this as well, they are allowed to. They'll just have to hold on to you as I cast a spell. Fine. I'll turn to the party. Um, Which I'm still talking to Laura in mid panic, being like, okay, yes, but what if Godric and Delilah are also in chains as well? And if we kill them, we're even more fucked up. Like, you can see Lucas is definitely in a bit of a panic right now. Right. He's going to calm down. L- listen, no, Lucas, Zell, don't you see? both of you, hold yeah. on. Mistra can show us what's happening if you just hold on to me. Wait, it's what? Mistra? We don't have a better option right now. I mean, I can go in alone, but if you want to join me, you can. I latch on to her. Okay, but let's be clear. I trust you more than I trust Mistra. Yeah, if you're willing to go along with her, I guess so. Okay, I'll trust your judgment. If we can get any information, it's worth it. I still trust you more than Mistra. Still uh, holds on to Adelaide. (laughs) Um, You guys hold hands in a circle here, and your vision suddenly overtaken by darkness. You see that your vision zooms to a neighborhood. Houses um, littering this area. Um, You see two young children uh, standing in front of their mother, uh, and one of them goes, Why do we have to go to bed so early? The mother says, you must be careful and not to be out too late at night. Otherwise, the chained oblivion might come get you. <laughs> Your vision moves uh, to a library. Um, wizards, including Alora, are looking for information on Thar's doom. Your vision moves again to the Calamity. Battle of the Gods. Red skies. Uh, impossibly long battles. Uh, only a third of the population ever survived to tell the tale. Avalir fell. Uh, most of the empires had to be completely rebuilt from the ground up. Um, names were forgotten. The betrayers walked the world. That's why the Divine Gate had to be built to separate gods from the material plane. And your vision lingers on that gate for maybe a minute. And your vision moves again to chains around a great mass of darkness, blackness, endless teeth and malice and anger and hatred. Chains around the great nothing. Your vision moves back to the divine gate and you look on the left hand side and see begins to crack as you make the stark realization that the divine gate is broken and the gods are allowed to walk wherever they wish as you make this realization you hear this great roar this great yell that lasts for a minute and as you hear this and begin to comprehend this the circle is broken you all are thrown back onto the ground um, catching yourself by your hands, steadying yourself, and wind kind of like buffets your hair back, and you just remember that yell of something old, ancient, older than the world itself, and it falls completely quiet. Oh, we're fucked. More than just us. Did we just. Did we just do the thing that we were trying to avoid? We might have, yeah. Yeah. Does that mean it's over? Well, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but (laughs) over till I'm dead. Oh 
guys. I mean... Like, yeah, we... Supposedly, we're supposed to finish off what was first started 20 years ago, but... Back then, it was just against a demon lord. This... This is way more, more than that. For sure. Just stick together now more than ever. Uh, he's gonna look uh, to Lucas and he's gonna say in Draconic, you think it's time to tell them In, in Draconic, Lucas is like... About the spell? Yeah, the thing we nabbed. Maybe there's some, like, counter thing if we bring it to them. Maybe they can make light of it, find a way to reverse something with Thar's Dune. That's the case, we're gonna have to get back to Rosanna. And quick. Alright, well here. We'll reveal it to them. We'll reveal it to the party here, and... Party? Well, I mean, the party... Well, okay, out of character. Remember, the party does know we have the spell, because we've talked about using it on Adelaide to become the next Avatar of Mist, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. just, it's just to the Bright... It's just to the Bright Queen and everyone else who wasn't a part of that that we said that we destroyed the spell. Okay, okay, well then, uh, yeah, so we'll just reveal it to the Bright Queen and then... Maybe they can help us find a way to remedy this. And if not, I have no idea what we should do. Yeah. Back in common, Lucas looks to everyone and is like, we need to get back to Rosanna in quick. Have we checked up on the army? There's no way to be seen. I'm guessing that maybe they got teleported away. Lucas maybe. is gonna grab and Lucas is gonna grab one of like can we actually see if the Bright Queen or any of the uh army is actually still around? Um you see just outside of the uh yeah, cavern here. Um, you do see the Bright Queen. Uh, army is looking pretty much majorly injured. Um, a sort of successful victory was won by the army. Um, you see the Bright Queen is holding the sending stone to her ear. Um, and she says, Well, looks like great news. We, Percy just told me, he, uh, he in fact managed to defeat Delilah and... Well, we just took out Casa, so we win, right? Almost. We need to get back to Rosanna and fast. You start hearing sounds of distant explosions and screams and confusion. Alora. Um, she looks. Yes. Are we going back? Yes. Now, please. All right. Um, Rushing out of the cavern, uh, the Bright Queen uh, helps, uh, as well as the council, teleporting everyone back to Rosanna. You guys arrive uh, in the city of Rosanna, um, and yeah, you see just like people looking around, confused, talking, um, you know, looking for some sort of answer. Uh, the Bright Queen goes, excuse me, pardon me, we need to get to the castle. Um, rushing directly in, um, and you see that uh, she closes the door and she looks and goes I'm sorry I'm sorry we will find some sort of solution we will give you an answer as soon as we have one <clears throat> closes the doors of the castle and you guys stand in the uh, main kind of like foyer alone with the bright queen and, the, um, and Alora and, and then I was going to say also as we're heading out uh, we contact Percy to make sure that him and the strike force get back to Rosanna 
as quick as possible and anyone else that we uh, sent out. Um, so Percy and Vex are like, here. Yeah, I, when I mean that, I mean like as far as like head officer wise. So yeah, Percy, Vex, and the Bright Queen, uh, Hilara too, all those people. Okay. Every, yeah, all the generals. Um, Commander Kendrick and Calroy are here as well. Zelron. Um, and your, both of your siblings are here as well. Um, and uh, there's just like people uh, standing in, uh, you guys are in this, this room here. Um, and Alora looks and goes, so the, the divine gate is broken. The gods are allowed to walk the mortal plane and do whatever they want here. What? don't I've never been in a situation like this before your highness I don't know what to do it gets even worse from there what do you mean another chain has been broken from Tharistoon supposed to be a secret guarded by the gods themselves. How... Technically, there's been two that we know of that has been broken for certain. One was over at Yggdrasil. The other broke as soon as Karsis fell. Delilah, both of those were chains as well, personified. Um, wait, uh, did Percy ever make his way back? Uh, Percy is here in the castle as well. Alright, so he's gonna turn to Percy and say, when you killed, or when you took down Delilah, did you hear anything? Like, chains? Anything that may have sounded like a chain, breaking, falling, anything like that. When, when we defeated Delilah, we both me and Vex. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Fuck, that's a he third. He even said that. He even said that audibly. At... Uh, well, that's three. You knew it. Which means Godric's got to be a fourth. Laura says to your to your question, Crystalina. There are multiple legend says that you know. There are supposed to be seven, but we don't know how strong Thara's Doom is and how many need to be, you know, chained to let him free. If he was strong enough to free himself with four, three or four chains released, then it could spell doom for the planet. Oh, all we need to do is just keep from killing Godric. Do you realize how difficult that is, considering how much of an asshole he is? Very much so, yeah. Right. Unless we can find a way to contain him. Forever. But either way... Wait, and he then might... he, he gets a revelation... Oh, sorry, here, you go first, actually. Yeah. Lucas just says, well... We have Karsus' spellbook. Maybe there's something there, but there's also something else that Zelrun and I may have not necessarily told the truth about. speak your mind when we said that we acquired the avatar spell and it was destroyed in a fight that wasn't the truth 
the written page of the spell wasn't destroyed. I've been carrying it since we got back from the Feywild. Tell me that you've been withholding this information that could have potentially put us at an advantageous situation at any points during this war, and now we are in a situation that is even worse. Now, hang on, before you get too before you get too hot headed, listen up. Did you not see when those dragons attacked? We've always wanted to tell, but we didn't know that if giving it the information to anybody else it would put them in danger, so we didn't want- we just wanted to be the only ones who held it. Just in case if mention, anybody else gets attacked. Not to mention, if there was the possibility that Godric, or even Karsis, was able to find a way to have an ear here, to win- it, Then they would have found out. And, Lord and that would have that. made- That would have made not only myself and my party, but that would have also made Rosanna itself an even bigger target than it has been. was dangerous to reveal this information. Whatever the case may be, um, the divine... <sighs> the divine is strange, and I don't know which gods would be coming forth. One thing I do know is that the betrayers, they've been waiting for this opportunity. We aren't dealing with... I mean, I've dealt with Osmodius before, but we are dealing with more than one god. She looks around and goes, This is a. This place is going to become a battleground of the gods. This place is going to be destroyed, as are many other places, including Isiora. Vasselheim, I'm sure, is going to fall as well. Whatever plan I had, it's never going to survive contact with gods. So. Okay, but wait. This whole thing is now open to, to gods in general, isn't it? There's gotta be good gods out there that can help us. That's right. They're all allowed to cross. And there are at least people who speak the voice of the gods. Isn't there one for the matron? She... You guys can also... Oh, sorry. Uh, Laura nods and goes, Well, yes, but the champion of ravens, you know, he hasn't been heard from in a long time. None of us know how to contact him directly, other than going through the voice of the Tempest, but... Wait, 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 wait. That's right, that's right. Uh, leader of... The leader of the Arishari, she is... And you can see Lucas is trying very hard to remember the actual connection between the voice of the Tempest and the champion of Ravens. <laughs> You see, Alora looks and is like, yes, well, they have a complicated history. Um, she doesn't really like talking about it, but I mean, I'll see if she can come here. I'll send a message to her. Give me a moment. Alora steps away. Is there any other possible ritual or anything like that that could have maybe find us a way to contact the Champion of Ravens? There is... God damn it. There is one way. But the man that... The last time he did it... I don't... I just don't particularly like working with him. But... Um, is it Drakeon again? No, it's... Uh, it's not Drakeon. Is it Essek Phalus? It's not Essek either. It's... He's a bard. He's a gnome. And... The last time he was able to contact the Champion of Ravens, he did it through one of the most powerful spells in existence. I, 
don't know if he's wait, 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 wait. A bard. Yes. That's I'm... that's your ace in the hole? Well, we're just simply talking about contacting him. No one said anything about, you know, stopping their guards. If we wanted to, and I know I, he's ridiculous as well. I don't fancy working with him, but if we want to contact him, I can have him sent here. Hey, quick, quick, quick thing. Uh, I have to leave a bit early. I have to get somewhere, so I apologize. No worries. Fine, you're fine. All right. Uh, I'll look at the VOD, though, so I don't get confused. Uh, bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Yeah. Um... Would Lucas have a bit of an idea on which bard Alora is talking about? Um. <laughs> on your passive... Yeah, you know. Uh, you have heard stories of Scanlan Shortall. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of thinks for a sec. Go... Yeah, just kind of opens his eyes and he's like... Wait, 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 wait. That bard. Oh my god. She <laughs> nods. It's, like, it's our most direct line of contact to the champion of ravens. Should I call him here? Considering that it's a bard that holds the key to helping us out, either that or leader of... Do we even know if either of them, like, made it out of Tal'Dorei? Like, I know Zephra is in Tal'Dorei. Do we even know if the Voice of the Tempest made it out? Uh, you see Vex speaks up and is like, She did. I have been keeping in contact with her. I also helped her evacuate the Ashari when Tal'Dorei fell. Um, they've been in Vasselheim for the time being, just trying to figure out where to go. Um, so if we wanted to, darling, we could talk to the Ashari, or we could talk to... We could talk to Scanlan, I suppose. Huh? Just kind of turns to the rest of the party and is like, what do you guys think? Might as well follow the few leads that we have. Well, we have that many options right now. Well, who should we talk to first? The two options out of character. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Carlo. It's either a bard by the name of Scanlan, who can cast Wish and communicate with this divine champion, or the leader of the uh, Arashari, who can also somehow contact the champion of Ravens, though you don't know exactly how. The leader of the Fire Shari seems like a more reliable source. Okay. That's true. Um, yeah. Uh, so Laura nods, um, points, uh, holds her fingers to her forehead, and you see uh, she speaks into the air. And you see after a few minutes, um, leaves kind of like uh, forming in a circle, and you see dusted, uh, you know, like uh, dust and wind. Um, and you see the voice of the Tempest, Keyleth, materializes in the castle. Um, she's got mm. <laughs> Kiki, pale skin, orange hair. She's a lot older now, um, but she's still got um, she's still got her staff, um, and you see her green eyes uh, and her freckles as well. Um, and you see she walks forth and goes, Percy, Vex, Alora. Oh, thank goodness you're okay. I heard the news about the Divine Gate. Um, you see Alora nods and goes, Yes, thank you for coming here on such short notice. Um, my friends and I, we want to know if you can... Can you contact... 
you think you can contact Max? Um, you see that Keyleth goes... Lucas, Lucas in the back is like, Wait. As in Vaxel? Your, your brother's the champion? Darling, I thought you already knew this. I thought someone already explained this to you, or... I thought we were on the same page about this. I didn't think that you didn't know that. Not a hundred, not a hundred, anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> hi, um, I'm Lucas Tanjiro, uh, son of Jason, who was a hero in Wild Mountain 20 years ago, made a pact with Asmodeus, then decided to kick his ass. That guy, oh, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah, also, um, kind of became friends with Sir Konos of the Fire Shari, saved his daughter, Borrowing her sword, that's another story. Oh, you're those people. Yeah, we, you know, we were really worried about Lumion. Glad you're okay, but yeah, I mean, good to meet you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, good to meet you too. Sorry to bring you in this, like this, but yeah, any chance you can contact, uh, Bax, the champion, however you want to call him? Uh, Vex puts her hand on Keyleth's shoulder. It's like, Darling, you don't have to if you don't want to. You know, it's like... It was it... I mean, it was either you or Scanlan. Oh, God. Hey, that actually makes so much sense now. <laughs> Percy is like... Yeah, we were li we were always going to choose Keyleth. We were... It was always Keyleth. Um, <laughs> Keyleth nods um, and holds her finger out. Um, a window opens and in through it flies a raven. Meaning on her finger. Um, and you you all see for the first time, I imagine, this raven speak. Um, she looks down at the raven and is like, Vax, may I have a moment? And the raven looks up and goes, Toying in the design of the gods again, are we? Uh, and you all see that. The raven turns into the ghostly vision of Vaxel Dan. Um, elven frame, pale skin, dark hair falling down to his shoulders, a long black robe. Um, this ghost of Vax looks around at the members of Vox Machina as well, and at you guys. Um, and... Uh, Keyleth says, good to see you again, Vax. Um, these are, she motions to you guys, these are, you know, some new friends I've made today. Um, more, th this is Lucas, was it, right? Yeah, uh, Lucas Tenjiro, son of Jason. Uh, you see the spirit of Vax looks at you and is like, your father messed with the divine as well, did he not? Unintentionally. And, well, at the very least, divine, uh, unintentionally with the divine of Exandria, but that's not the case right now. I'm sure you know that the divine gate has fallen. He nods and says, anything, most things with the divine are unintentional, <laughs> as I would know. But I, the matron of ravens, she saw this coming as well. She tried to prevent this, but no god could stop this from happening. I... And, and I'm sure you also know that three of the chains of Tharistun have fallen as well. Vax looks to Keyleth, and Vax and Percy goes, Is this true? 
an old chained god in ancient god that hasn't been heard in literal centuries. Uh, he pinches the bridge of his nose and says, There's not much that I can do from this side, but I'll see what I can find. Just because of the Divine Gate, we know that another calamity is possibly upon us, another war of the gods. Or at the very least, the Betrayer God's starting to cause shit down here. Keyleth looks as well and goes, in also, because Zifra fell when Taldore fell. Taldore fell? Long story. No one was there to guard that portal either. We aren't dealing with just gods, we're dealing with titans, emperors and empresses of the elements, betrayers that want to destroy all of Exandria, Tharsdun included. I hate to call this... What? She looks at you, Chrysalina, and she says, well, when the Calamity of I, you know, finally ended, the betrayer gods, they got sent away, you know, and imprisoned, um, presumably for eternity. I imagine that all they want is revenge. That's um, sad. She shrugs and is like, it kind of is. Um, but it's, again, I hate to call this a fruitless, hopeless endeavor, but you know, we have, I mean, with the gate falling, you know, we have access to good gods as well, but I hate to say it, but we really are outnumbered. Um, Vax? Well, I'm not giving up until I'm dead, so I don't know about the rest of you guys. It would be easier if we were all on the same page. Um, Keyleth smiles to you um, and fist bumps you um, and she smiles and goes well okay Vax what is what is she saying Vax goes I think she's coming down to the material plane as well to partake in this battle he looks to Lucas and says I think you might be right, friend. It might... This might just be another calamity. I guess we can't afford to pull our punches anymore. And you see, from the back of holding, Lucas takes out the journal or the uh, the journal that has the avatar spell and you see that it kind of slowly turns to the page where it's at out of character did i miss the part where this thing was introduced or do i just not remember um, it was it was in the feywild when Alora went missing, and Titania, uh, when taken by Titania, and in order to get Alora back, she wanted inform she wanted a couple of journals from Carsis's laboratory in the Feywild. But because Gar Godric decided to lay siege in Yggdrasil, and somehow we managed to get Alora in the meantime, we never gave the journal to Titania, so we end up just kind of keeping it to where we discovered, oh shit, this has the Avatar spell. Okay. Um, the text glows kind of like purple there in your hands, Lucas. And you see Alora looks at you panicked and is like, Lucas, if we cast that spell, 
one of us becomes a god and far greater of a threat than any of us have the capacity to handle. I know. But at least in that case, I would make sure. This old lady, damn. Can't see that, like shit, but okay. Yeah. Sorry. But (laughs) if one of us were to become a god, that would make sure. That would be certain that we have at least one god for certain on our side. And it would Are you suggesting give one us of us turn edge. into a god? For lack of better words, yeah. And did I miss something? How would that happen exactly? So, Karsus' avatar um, allows you basically to, yeah... Uh, cast the spell and then become a god um, but you have to choose, oh, I see. choose from an existing god yes Lucas remember this kind now. of looks Lucas kind of looks from the avatar spell page over to Voxel Dan and he goes if this spell were to be to cast how would that affect the gods at the Divine Gates? Would they still be able to walk on this plane and have their avatars among us? Laura goes, to my knowledge, if you choose a god that had an avatar down here, you would essentially replace it. The god itself, um, you know, has its own sort of set of powers. Um, in a strange, it, it sort of splits your sentience in two, um, where you can switch between being the avatar or being the god or goddess it, itself. Uh, what are the not downside saying that I'm, uh, downside is you'd pretty much be stuck in Exandria for eternity, at least for us two. Also, certain gods have certain responsibilities. Um, If you took over the god of the dead and, you know, ushered souls down to the underworld and you didn't do your job, then souls would be allowed to go wherever they wanted. Like I said, I'm not volunteering myself for this. Gods know that I am probably the least likely to be a candidate for being an avatar of a deity. I mean, hell. I already have enough troubles with my own life as is. She looks and goes, then who are you suggesting become an avatar of of a god? I mean, who could handle that? Out of the current party here? I know we've kind of said this before, but my best bet would be the one that already has favor of a god already. Favor is a strong word. You know what I mean, Adelaide. (laughs) I can't say I think I'm a good candidate. I mean, I mean there has either... to be other ways to get connections with gods and goddesses than just to become one. Well, if we were to decide to have one of us become a god, I do agree you're the best candidate. I mean, live here. I mean, it's... I'd have and to sacrifice. Like it the whole thing that makes me me. Both me and Crystalina Who would knows be tied to Exandria. I mean, what about Zoran? He's practically the Prince of Hell already. Uh, he is a <laughs> Prince of Hell, and that already kind of kind of puts to be a... That and is also, an you really thing to think about. And just kind of Look. Lucas looks at her and is like, "You really want Zelron to not only be a prince of hell, but also be the avatar of a deity." I 
wouldn't be a bad avatar. <laughs> man. I wouldn't be bad at that. You well. I mean, I think he's a good guy. I don't, I don't See? mistrust yeah. him with that at all. I just—it's a funny thing to think about. Funny. Not only the Prince of Hell, but also a god. What a mixture! <laughs> Alara would be proud. <laughs> well, at that point, he'd ended up being—I mean, depending on the god, he could almost be the straight-up Lord of the Hells at that point. And I don't think any of us want that right now. <laughs> best as well. But ultimately, if you don't want to cast the spell, and if you don't want to become a god, then we'll have to find someone else. I. Either that, or we'll have to find some other way to gain the favor of the gods to help take down Therasdun and all the betrayers. Which is another set oh. of worms on its own. Adelaide, what do you think? I, I was just going to say, I, I know we don't... I mean, she's not a good option, but Mr. could have a lot of connections for us. Um, Alora looks in the ass. It's true. I mean, one is better than nothing, and she could allow us to gain the favor of the other gods as well. Um, as long as you feel comfortable talking to her and I never like talking to her, but for the cause that we're currently working towards, it's worth it. Okay. Then we we can at the very least until at the very least until then, Lucas carefully rips the page out of the tattered journal. Not Tears it up. Shut up. <laughs> uh, rips the avatar spell out of the book that it's in and kind of puts it in the, uh, in Karsis's old spell book. I know that's probably not the best way to do this. Trust me, I know. Looks at everyone. But either way, at this point, you might be a better choice to keep a hold of this more than me. I'll be sure to keep an eye on it. Um, at least now, Karsis won't be able to use it. But on the downside, he ended up being tied to a chain of Therastoon. As did Delilah. And mo most likely Godfrey. In terms of Vax, it's like, oh yeah, Delilah came back. Uh, became a vampire, and Percy and Vex killed her again, and she also ended up being tied to a chain of Therastoon, which broke. Uh, Vax... <laughs> Vax will then looks and is like, I've only been gone for a short time, a literal <laughs> short time. And Percy's like, I know, I know, okay, but we dealt with it. <laughs> in my, Okay, in their defense, I'm technically responsible for two chains being broken. Vax looks at you and just pinches the bridge of his nose and is like, right, well, alright, um, the Matron of Raven. In my defense, the first one, in my defense, the first time I was being manipulated by Karsis. <laughs> I'm not angry at you. I... And then we didn't realize Karsis was tied to a chain, and so we killed him. And stole well, his staff and spellbook. Okay. Speaking of the chains, there are seven, right? That we know of. And we've only figured out about three of the chains, two of which are broken. Do we have any idea what the others might be? Like I said, the first one that we know for certain was Yggdrasil, which... Karsis used me to unlock and break. The two that we broke already, as we know, were tied to Karsis and Delilah Briarwood. And fourth one, we can just only assume, was tied to Godric. So that leaves three unknowns. 
do we know if actually do we know if Astrid was taken prisoner or escaped or is she like straight up dead now? Astrid, uh, she did escape from Rexentrum. She's alive. Lucas thinks for a bit and is like, Astrid. We assumed Astrid was a placeholder because. Well, we kind of killed one of the only other possible big bats that might have taken her place. But what if she was still connected to a chain no matter what? Laura goes, then it would guarantee that at least one chain would stand if either Godric or Cassus commanded her. If they knew that she wouldn't be killed or something like that, then... You know, she would be allowed to. If she were connected to a chain, at least one chain remains. Even. Even if we didn't let her live, it would guarantee that at the very least, one chain would be broken no matter what, because. In comparison to Karsis, Godric, and Delilah, we all agree that Astrid was by far the weakest by a long shot. So that would have almost made a guarantee that it, one chain would have been broken if we didn't, if she hadn't escaped. Right. Well, that still leaves the mystery of the other three. Who knows where they are? Like I said, we can assume one's tied to Godric. several threats on our hands already, even outside of Thoristoon. We should make a decision, though, on if we're going to have Adelaide become an avatar of Mistra, or if we're going to find someone else. I think Mistra has to decide that, or Adelaide has to uh, decide that. Maybe... Agreed. It couldn't hurt to start looking for other options, just as backups. Okay. All right, we'll do. I know a few people who might be willing to take up that mantle. And in addition, um, you see that uh, Laura points her staff at a table, and a uh, projected map appears, and you see just like uh, circles uh, that are like all in red. Um, at various cities all throughout Wild Mount. And you see, she says, the betrayers, they're here. They are already causing havoc and um, destruction in their wake. We should try to deal with them for the time being while searching for a better candidate, perhaps, to overtake Mistra. Um, looks at the map she says we can start with the closest one um, but still uh, this threat needs to be combated as soon as possible so in our present state I don't think we're able to fight gods we need some favors of gods of our own looks to the members of Vox Machina and is like to be fair my knowledge of you guys is kind of decently limited I spent like a good six months isolated by myself Laura can explain why later but I know you guys faced off against the Whispered One once with favors of gods before how were you able to achieve that Vexalia looks and says, It wasn't easy. We didn't kill him. We sent him beyond the Divine Gate. 
she looks at Percy. Percy looks back at her. They both sigh, and Xalia goes, I need to go as well. I have to talk. There are lots of people that I need to talk to. I... This situation is much worse than I feared. Percy? Percy nods, uh, and the two of them walk out. Um, Laura picks up and is like, Right, they had these, to my understanding, trammels that allowed them to send the Whispered One beyond the Divine Gate. Uh, they didn't necessarily kill it was, him. Right, it was a similar situation with fighting against Asmodeus, though. There were a set of three or maybe four enchanted javelin-like weapons that you had to stab into the person, and with Asmodeus, there was some sort of spell or ritual where you had to say his true name, and they managed to send him past the Divine Gate to where he would excuse me, where he wouldn't be able to come back. She looks and goes, unless the gate fell. Oh shit, does that mean Asmodeus is gonna come back? Um, does that mean Vecna's gonna come back? She looks down at the map of Wildmount, and you see just symbols of the various betrayer gods all throughout Wildmount. You see symbols of Tiamat, of Grumsh, of Asmodeus, of Zahir, and you see the symbol of Vecna over the center of Wildmount. Um, this is mainly focusing more on Asmodeus and it's like, oh, fuck, my dad's not gonna like this. She looks and is like, well, we have to do something. We can't just let these people die. I mean, we can lead an evacuation, but I mean, like you said, fighting gods. It's to do what we'll have to do what we can, but some way or another we need to gain power from the gods, whether it's becoming whether gaining their favors, whether becoming avatars of them. Um, you, see, you might be right. Mistra might be our next uh, best bet here. to the other gods and goddesses as well and then we can gain their favor um, it'll put us in a better situation uh, looks at the break queen you'll be okay of course um, Keyleth heads out of here as well the ghost of Vax turns back into a raven and flies out of the window um, Keyleth walks out um, Allura looks at the party and is like to Mistress Palace, then? Mistress Palace. Once she, again. She walks out of the castle and uh, begins casting a teleportation spell. Um, as you hear the distant sounds of fighting, combat, screaming, magic, uh, terror, or um, and just overall chaos. Wild Mount is falling to the Betrayer Gods and the Titans that have waited decades, centuries for this opportunity. And that's what we're going to call today's session right there. Oh boy. <laughs> the Betrayer Gods, they're back, which means I get to mess with Vecna and Asmodeus and Grooms and Lolk. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm already yeah. thinking like this is going to be interesting because like I was going through the list of god 
uh, of the gods in my wild mom book, and I was like, okay, which one would Lucas gain favor of? <laughs> well, we'll have to see you next week. Um, but thank you guys for playing, and thank you to those at home for watching, and we will see you all next weekend. Fare thee well. Bye-bye. First thing...